Now I'm going to review uh, Christian Dior fragrance. It is Fahrenheit. I'm going to tell you guys right now, this is a classic in my eyes. It's, um, if I had a list of a top five, this would be in it of my favorite bottles. No doubt about it. I just want to put in a little hint here that uh, the other bottles, these two guys, uh, Fahrenheit Absolute and Fahrenheit 32, also worth uh, taking a look at. Um, if you're fairly new to the Fahrenheit brand or the Christian Dior brand, please start with this one. It's it's a masterpiece. I don't know how I'm going to cover this one in 10 minutes, but I'm going to give it a try and uh, see what I can do. So Fahrenheit Dior, I'm going to show you the bottle. Um, the name, the bottle, the juice inside just fits perfectly. It all comes together. And the box here, just a generic box. So let's go with the, uh, the bottle sizes. Uh, there's numerous sizes with this fragrance. I'm just going to go with the standard 1.7, 3.4 ounce. You'd be looking around 50 to almost $100 American to purchase this fragrance. This fragrance hit the shelves in 1988. Now this is crazy because it's, it was a hit right away. It actually had the best, the most successful initial three month sales of any fragrance launch up to that point. It sold 1.4 million bottles that October to December 1988 in Europe alone. So obviously this is a unique fragrance but a lot of people have owned it, have smelt it. I would say more older gentlemen know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about Fahrenheit. Um, if you're younger, you know, under 30, um, I won't say is as common as um, if you were older. So, yes, if you want to be unique, I would look this way because I haven't had much run-ins with a lot of kids are my age or Tim's age um, that would actually wear this or purchase this. Usually when you go in a department store, they're going to go towards the new releases. They're not really going to try to sell some Fahrenheit to you. So, um, group, this fragrance is a woody floral musk, Perfumé, Jean-Louis Lerzac, and Maurice Roger. Now, funny story. A little bit of insider knowledge here um, was that Jean-Claude Elena, my favorite, my favorite perfumier, um, Dior asked him to do a set for Fahrenheit, for Dior. He was one of the perfumiers that was going to do Fahrenheit. At the last minute, they told Jean-Claude Elena, you didn't win, you didn't get it. Um, of course, Jean-Louis and Maurice got, got Fahrenheit. And I got to say, as much as I love Jean-Claude Elena, he couldn't have done this. There's no way. Um, this is a classic in my eyes, and I'm actually happy that uh, Maurice and Jean Louis got Fahrenheit because it's definitely an amazing fragrance. Recommended age, I'm not even going to put an age to it. I'm just going to say anyone who dares wearing this unique fragrance deserves to wear this fragrance. How many sprays and wears? One on the chest, two on the neck. I got a few people asking me why the first spray on the chest all the time. All the time with it. Reason why is most of my fragrances I don't use daily, like every day. So my first spray usually it's got maybe a little bit of juice in the stem here. And what I'm going to do is my first spray usually isn't the best spray, so I put it on the chest, waste the spray, so then I know that I have enough juice for a full spray on my neck with my uh, exposed skin. So that's why I actually do the first one on the chest. It's kind of like to waste that juice and get a fresh spray going on. So. Um, Please be light on the hand when you're spraying this fragrance. Just another thing, I did three sprays, one on the chest, two on the neck. That's perfect. So be light. Don't go five or six with this one. Less is better with Fahrenheit. Notes, top notes. Lavender, mandarin, orange, hawthorn, nutmeg, flower, cedar, bergamot, chamomile, and lemon. Middle notes. Nutmeg, honeysuckle, carnation, sandalwood, violet leaf, jasmine, lily of the valley, and cedar. Base, leather, tonka bean, amber, patchouli, musk, and vetiver. So lots of notes, a lot of different smells, but there's some quality, quality notes in there. So let's take a look and see what Dior want to do with this fragrance. Now in 88, when they were looking at this fragrance, the team, the Dior team for men, they wanted to go a different direction than the usual. I got to applaud the team. They did an amazing job. They went a different route, and I think it paid off. Well, the sales paid off and uh, definitely applaud them because most fragrance houses are trying to be the same old, same old. They're thinking cash money, so they're trying to steal 
the next idea. Who's number one right now? Oh, Aqua Dijo? Let's do an aquatic. Basically, that's what they're doing. So they're stealing ideas and they're trying to get as much money from the public. See, all went the other way. They went bold, they went different, and it paid off. And I love this fragrance. So when I get the first whiff of this fragrance, guys, you're going to get that motor oil, burnt gasoline, petroleum type of feel. That's what the bottle kind of looks like, right? And uh, with that, you get a little bit of citrus notes mixed in. Um, really, it blends after a while into more of a leather muskiness with a deep smell of sandalwood, giving it almost a mossiness of, of an appeal. Um, also, strange accord of nutmeg and violet kind of reminds me of a railroad track, like the old wooden beams that they use. Um, kind of drying there, they're kind of split a little bit, you know, they, they're fairly old, they went through, you know, some oil maybe dripped on it and stuff. So that's what it makes me think of. Um, when I'm when I was younger, I used to go on snowmobile trips like crazy, and this fragrance brings me back to that. You know, the forest, and um, we used to bypass railroad tracks all the time, and the you know the burnt gasoline from the snowmobile, and we're wearing leather jackets and leather gloves and all that. This is what this reminds me of. It brings me back to when I was a little kid, and it definitely uh, it's so amazing, guys. Um, there's some smoke floral in in this. There's some warm spice in the heart. Um, in the final stage of this fragrance, funny as it is, it gives you like a dusty cedar, um, sandalwood, of course, and there's patchouli in there, but it's kind of muted, so it produces more of a dry, warm feeling than anything else. Um, every single stage of this fragrance is pleasant to smell in my eyes. It's just amazing. Um, even this fragrance came out over 20 years ago this smells more modern and better than the majority of the new releases today you could release Fahrenheit in 2010 as a new release and it would be groundbreaking it would be amazing so that's just telling you how great this stuff is because some stuff that comes out in the 80s smells dated um, you know it's not not that great anymore in 2010 but this stuff just takes out the competition. I'm telling you guys, this is a winner. This is by far my best green fragrance that I have now. I have over 100, perhaps even 200 bottles right now of different fragrances. I've tested them all. This is the best green fragrance in my arsenal. This is such a leather jacket, white t-shirt, jeans, uh, maybe a cowboy could, could wear this someone that's not afraid to get dirty this is your fragrance I wouldn't say a mechanic would be wearing this because they're usually dirty all the time and they don't really want to smell like that anymore when they're all cleaned up so um, definitely somebody that has a mean streak to them Fahrenheit guys Fahrenheit so it's unique it's bold it's mysterious it's sexy um, if you're worried about offending people this is not your fragrance go with the same old same old this is not for you this stuff is groundbreaking in all accounts. Why would you hate this? Of course, that petroleum, gasoline, rotting wood, mossiness might not be for you. I'm going to say one-third of the people that watch this review are going to hate this fragrance. Style, classic. It's modern. Um, bottles. Really nothing compares to this, but I'm going to say gray flannel. It's close, but it's not, it's not Fahrenheit, guys. It's not Fahrenheit. My tryer pass, guys, this is an absolute buy. I just can't say it enough. This is a buy. Um, if you think from what I've described that you might not like it, give it a try at least. Give it a few days, sample it, and see what maybe you're in that one third that hates it. So let's take a look and see how I rate Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit projection 10 out of 10. Great projection with this fragrance. Longevity 10 out of 10. Amazing. 10 hours plus with Fahrenheit on my skin. Versatility, 8 out of 10. It is a versatile fragrance. It can be your signature scent um, season for fall and winter. Overall smell, this fragrance gets a 10 out of 10. Simply amazing in my eyes. Overall, guys, Fahrenheit gets a 10 out of 10. It is a groundbreaking fragrance.